You've just completed lecture one, which essentially was an orientation video, just to give you a bit more of an insight into some of the detail that we're going to be covering in this uh, in this course. What we're now going to do is uh, roll up our sleeves to a certain extent and start looking at some of the fundamentals of estate, retirement and investment planning, albeit at an elementary level, and this is going to give you a really good understanding of some of the complexities of, of this particular topic. Let's look at the course objectives. Let me say right up front, we've structured the course content in such a way as to make a very complex financial discipline understandable. We've laid out the content in a pyramid fashion, where we start at the top of the pyramid, where you'll find the more elementary content, and as we work our way down the pyramid, so the content will become more detailed and complex. However far down the pyramid you choose to progress, our goal is to equip you to a level of understanding that will enable you to start taking your financial future into your own hands and to educate you to a point where you'll be able to engage with a suitably qualified financial planning professional and have a better understanding of this complex topic. Please note that this course, whilst many of the principles will apply here in the world, is designed primarily for South Africans living in South Africa. This particular course is pitched at the elementary level and whilst fairly in-depth and detailed, it should be understandable to most people. In any financial plan, whether it be estate planning, retirement planning or investment planning, there's six fundamental steps. Let's just go through those six steps which would be contained in any well-structured financial plan. Step number one, prepare your financial details. What we're saying here, and I guess it can be likened to a financial stock take, write down your income, your commitments, your assets, your liabilities, your debts, all the loans, money that people owe you, and so on. Create your financial balance sheet. Then, step number two, you need to identify your financial goals. These goals would include your estate goals, your retirement, and your investment goals, whether short, medium, or long term. Step number three, then you start looking at developing a strategy. And here we would then go about determining your financial strengths and weaknesses, then develop a strategy designed to achieve these goals. Step number four is where you start to consider recommendations. And a professional planner can recommend a plan and products with clear targets to help you to achieve your long-term needs and goals. Step number five involves the implementation of the financial plan. When you've discussed the recommendations with a suitably qualified planner and you're happy, then you can look at implementing the plan. Then step number six, you need to monitor the plan and regularly review your needs and goals. Your plan needs to be continually monitored to ensure that it is always relevant to changing circumstances and needs. At this point, I'd like to to stress the point that it is recommended that you partner with a professional planner in this exercise. Having looked at the six fundamental steps that relate to, to any planning, whether, as I say, it be estate, retirement or, or investment, let's now look at estate planning. And let's more particularly look at the purpose of a will. Your will is probably one of the most important documents you'll ever sign, and yet it's one of the most neglected. Let's take a look at a traditional will. First of all, what is the purpose of a will? The main purpose of a will is to dictate what should happen to your assets upon your death. In your will, you can make special bequests, appoint guardians, and share your assets amongst your beneficiaries. You can also set up trusts for minors. What about the importance of a will? Well. Without a valid will, you would then die intestate. This means dying without a will, and then there are certain laws in South Africa that relate to intestate succession. And this may or may not be suitable and desirable in your circumstances. It can also cause delays in winding up your estate, and assets could well get distributed differently to your wishes. As already mentioned, you can nominate guardians and set up trusts for minor children. The drafting and the execution of the will is also very important. Whilst a valid will is quite easy to draft, you need to consult with a professional advisor to ensure that the will gives life to your wishes. A qualified person also needs to be appointed as executor, 
so that your wishes can be carried out timelessly, efficiently, and in accordance with your wishes. Continuing with estate planning, let's look at structuring your estate. How you structure your estate will determine, to a large extent, how your will should be drafted. These are some of the things to consider. Estate liquidity, in other words, how much money will be in the estate and how much money is required in the estate. You determine how much money your estate will need to settle debts, pay special bequests, pay estate expenses and have sufficient cash to provide an income for your family. If there's a shortfall, determine how to take care of that shortfall. You might like to consider using life assurance to provide for the extra liquidity or, or cash. The use of trusts. Inter vivos trusts are set up during your lifetime and can be used for a number of valid reasons. Here you would definitely need to consult with a financial professional before considering such structures. Then there are testamentary trusts and these are set up in terms of your will and could also be used for a number of reasons including minors, minor children's inheritances. Then there's your business interests. You own shares in a business, you need to look at the implications of having a shareholder agreement, a buy and sell agreement, looking at the effect of contingent liabilities, shareholders loan accounts and business overheads. You also need to consider business continuity and the risks to the personal estate and the risks of financial loss should a key person pass away. Continuing with estate planning, there's family income planning. And here let's look at some of the basics and we will go into more detail in another module. Consider the capital needs. In other words, enough money to replace motor vehicles, purchase alternative accommodation and any other capital need should you pass away prematurely. These amounts should be included in your state liquidity exercise. You should also complete this exercise assuming that you become disabled. Another consideration is children's education. You need to determine the inflation adjusted cost of education together with your financial advisor. You then need to make provision for a capital amount to be invested or to invest on a monthly basis. Life assurance is a good option in this situation. And then there's the income needs. This exercise needs to be done with professional help as well. Advisors have cash flow tools to work out the capital required to generate an inflation proofed income for your surviving spouse and family. Assumptions would include spouse's income, inflation rate and investment ro growth rate. Once again, this exercise should be done assuming that you become disabled. Let's move on to retirement planning now. We've just given you some insights into the importance of a well-structured estate plan and this can be regarded as the foundation stone on which all other planning can be built. We can now move on to retirement planning. You should bear in mind that you should lay your foundation, the estate plan, first, then turn your attention to your retirement plan. In order for a retirement plan to work, you need time and you need to ensure that you ensure against any risks that could impact on the time available to you. Let's look at your retirement plan. And essentially, retirement can planning can be split into three main topics. There's retirement savings, in other words, the phase you go through whilst you're working and building towards your retirement. And the different types of savings, you have compulsory savings, and these traditionally are provided by your employer, so pension and provident funds, then there's preservation funds and retirement annuities. These are all compulsory savings of some sort or another. Then there's discretionary savings, things like bank investments, unit trusts, endowment policy, shares, property and offshore investments. You need to determine your retirement gap together with your advisor, then calculate what you need to invest. And we'll talk about re the retirement gap in the retirement planning module in this course. Then there's retirement income. In other words, the income that you would need to earn at retirement. Once again, we need to look at the uh, compulsory money and how that can be invested. And here we can look at things like single life annuities, joint annuities where husband and wife jointly get an income, insured annuities where an income is paid and when the person passes away, the capital amount is paid out, 
living annuities which are quite flexible but are very dependent upon the underlying investment portfolio that you put together and there you definitely need some professional help. Then there's inflation linked annuities which can be purchased from various institutions. Then there's the, the discretionary money, cash or money market, share portfolios, unit trusts or unit trust linked investments, offshore, property and endowments. The question is to determine your income, medical and aid needs, make your growth and inflation assumptions. Then as far as products are concerned, you might say retirement solutions, you get your compulsory products which include pension and provident funds, and these are usually provided by an employer, preservation funds with, for withdrawal benefits if you resign, retirement annuities for voluntary additional savings. Then there's bank investments, and I know I'm repeating myself, endowment policies, unit trusts, and unit trust linked products. These are all encapsulated in the terminology retirement solutions or products. Let's move on to investment planning. Now if estate planning is the foundation stone upon which we should build all of our other financial plans, then investment planning plays an equally significant role in retirement planning. When you prepare a retirement plan with a professional advisor, amongst other things, you need to make certain assumptions like inflation rates and investment growth rates. Investment planning involves understanding investment markets and options so that you can build investment portfolios designed to achieve certain growth and risk goals. Let's look at the basics of putting an investment plan together and we'll go into more detail in another module in this course. Let's look at your investment goals. Those can be broken down into short term which would be traditionally less than two years medium term, three to five years, and then longer term, greater than five years. Let's look at the implications of investment risk. And your advisor can help you to determine your risk profile, then match your investment portfolio risk to your risk profile, and more importantly, to your needs or goals. Then there's the whole question of asset classes, and this is where it starts becoming quite interesting. The five main asset classes are cash, bonds, property, equities and offshore investments. And your advisor will help you to mix asset classes to create a balanced portfolio, once again to match your needs and your risk profile. We've come to the end of part one and uh, the next module is a quiz based upon what we've just covered. After completing the quiz you'll then be able to progress to the next level of each topic. Topic uh, part two will be family income protection. Part three, a lot more detail on retirement planning. Part four, your income options at retirement. Once again, going into quite a lot of detail. Part five, investment planning. And then I thought I'd throw in something around what's happening in the industry and the regulatory environment, because this also has a, a massive effect on, on how you go about your planning and how you should seek advice and this is called treating customers fairly. After each of these modules you'll be you'll need to complete the corresponding quiz before moving on to the next module.